Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 36. I hope everybody is having a happy holidays and is ready for the new year coming up. So, in this test we're going to be using a Cerberus Pyrotronics Chime to demonstrate the simple zone code capability on my Siemens SXLEX fire alarm panel. So, if you look at the front of the panel, you'll see that there are currently four zones in use on this control unit. We have the detector loop with my uh, Siemens Cerberus Pyrotronics PE11T smoke detector here on zone one. The two pull stations are the next two zones, zone two and three, um, which are labeled as pull station one and pull station two. Uh, I'm pretty sure the pull station that's the farthest away from the panel on the board, directly below the keypad, is pull station one, and in the middle is pull station two. And then at the very bottom, zone 4, is the sprinkler riser. That's that zone that's tied in through the DMP system over to that uh, demonstration sprinkler riser and water flow switch that's mounted on the bottom of my uh, auto pull system board. So what the simple zone code feature allows the panel to do is to individually indicate which of the zones went into alarm based on the signal being outputted to the NAC circuits. In this case, I have the... Uh, service pyrotronics chime that you'll see in a minute set on single stroke chime so for each zone that goes into alarm there will be a corresponding number of uh, chimes from that device one chime for zone one through uh, four chimes for zone four so let's go ahead and take a look at the devices I have installed for today for our first notification appliance we have this Cerberus pyrotronics MTL this is a uh, multi-tone horn. There's dip switches. You can choose between eight different tones. So this is going to be acting as our single stroke chime for today's test. And although it's a chime, uh, unlike some of the other ones like the system sensor chimes and the um, EST Genesis series chimes, the chime sound on this is still quite loud comparable to uh, some of the other tones that are on the horn. So it's definitely not a quiet chime by any means. On the other NAC circuit, we have a System Sensor SR remote strobe. As you can see in the window, it's set to 15 candela. I picked this up a couple months ago for a surprisingly good price with uh, a couple other System Sensor goodies, so maybe we'll be seeing more of those to come in future system tests. For the pull stations today, I tried to match them up nice with the uh, notification appliances that are installed above them. So on the right-hand side, we have a Firelight BG12 SL to go along with the system sensor strobe that's up there. And over on the left hand side we have a Pyrotronics MS5 pull station. This one has a Pyralarm branding on the bottom and usually when I've seen those, those are uh, labeled as MFS-4 pull stations. So it looks like there's a little bit of a um, model numbering discrepancy with these but uh, the label on the inside of this particular unit does say Pyrotronics uh, MS5. So let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to go ahead and start things off with the Pyrotronics MS5. So this pull station is wired into zone 2. So now you hear the chime pulsing out two tones every couple of seconds to indicate that zone 2 has alarmed on the system. So now I'm going to come down here and pull the uh, BG-12, and at first it's not going to seem like it does anything, but we'll go back and take a look at that in a second or two. So you can see we have both zones 2 and 3 in alarm, and if you listen closely you'll hear the panel alternate between the codes for zone 2 and zone 3. So 
So now I've put all three zones on the main board into alarm, and we'll listen and see what uh, the panel does to handle that. So that was its first round of sounding the uh, one pulse for zone one. Now it's going to go into sounding for zone two. And finally, sounding for zone three. So you hear that it does three rounds for each distinct zone that's in alarm before moving on to the next zone. Now when I go to silence these, I'm actually going to have to silence it three times to silence each of the alarms from the three zones. So now the panel's finally silenced after all the alarms uh, were silenced by the silence key. So as you heard, as the alarms were cycling around, I'm not sure if my voice got distorted by the uh, sound of the chime or the panel piezo or anything, but for each zone that's in alarm, it's obviously going to enunciate that on the NACs through the, uh, the pulses of the chime. But when it has multiple zones in alarm, what it'll do is it'll sound three rounds of each zone that's in alarm before moving on to the next, and it just does that sequentially down the board. So if zone one, two, and three are in alarm here, even though I activated them uh, out of order, I activated zone two, then zone three, then zone one. It will default back to doing zone one, zone two, then zone three. So now that these are silenced, if I went and activated the water flow zone, um, I honestly don't know if it's gonna re-alarm the initial zones or not. So I'm thinking I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to try that out and so we can have all four zones in alarm and we'll see what happens. So I just realized that I actually don't have my security Torx uh, screwdriver with me to open up the cover on the water flow switch and activate it. So I'm actually going to have to pop open this Honeywell uh, cabinet here and manually activate the uh, radionics poppet module that it's wired into. So even though I already silenced the first three zones, you can hear that it's actually cycling through a couple different zones. Uh, there's zone four, which is the water flow we just activated. That's zone two. And then we have zone three. And now zone one. Huh, that's strange that it's going out of order now.
It might have inserted uh, zone four somewhere higher into the priority list. Since uh, it's the most recent one in alarm and the other ones that already been silenced. But you'll notice that the uh, bypass alarm silence light is off now, so it must have cleared out the uh, silences on the other on the other zones that were in alarm. Alright, any time now. There we go. So I know the silence key acts as a uh, re-alarm key, so I must have accidentally pressed it a couple times too many and it uh, re-alarmed it and I had to run through the whole circus all again to get everything silenced. So now that that's finally shut up, we can go ahead and reset all of the initiating devices we've messed with. So we're going to start by resetting the firelight station. And then we'll go ahead and reset the pyrotronic station. It's not going to seem like it in the finished edited video, but I actually had a lot of trouble getting this station to activate uh, the first time around when I pulled it. Had to do some impromptu maintenance on it because the uh, switch was jammed and for some reason when I would pull down the handle it wasn't uh, allowing the switch to fully release outward, so I had to go get some... Uh, oil and uh, clean that up a bit so that it would finally activate properly like you're gonna see once this video is nice and edited but I'll put the uh, the scenes from the first two takes at the end of this video just as a uh, fun blooper and showing you how uh, sometimes this doesn't all work out as planned. So we're gonna say goodbye to the four zones we had an alarm and reset those away. And now I'm going to go ahead and reset the DMP system. I've been silencing this in the background, um, but you'll be able to see all of our alarms here. We have the fire alarm. There's a halon system trouble because I don't have it powered up for this test. And then you see the fire riser uh, alarm point on the keypad. So we can go ahead and reset this. And I think I said this in a couple of videos back, but... I had somebody else ask me again why I usually use this keypad down here when I reset it, even though I have the other keypad mounted with uh, the system on the other board. Um, plus, this keypad is kind of yellowed and nasty while the other one is nice. Uh, the only reason for that is just because of the way the other one's mounted um, and how the lights are in this room. Uh, that one has a really bad glare, so you basically can't read the screen. But uh, when I bring the camera over here and I shoot it on this keypad, as you can see, you can read the LCD nice and clearly, so it just works out better that way, but maybe I'll try to switch it up with some of the keypads at some point. So that's about it. Um, going into this video, I really didn't know how uh, some of the zone code stuff uh, worked, so got to figure that out while I was filming the test, but uh, that's about it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great new year. So we're going to start things off today with the pyro alarm station. So this is wired into zone 2 on the panel, and since I have the NAC program to simple zone code, when I pull this you're going to hear it start chirping out two short beeps uh, every few seconds on this chime to indicate that zone 2 has gone into alarm. So let's go ahead and pull it. Okay then. Panel never went into alarm. So... Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. 
Hmm. So there it goes. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have to try that again. So we're gonna start things off today by activating the pyrotronic station. Still nothing. Hmm. Well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> 